Welcome to Don't Swipe. You probably know us from TikTok. Today, we will be talking about the Sauter family mystery, the unsolved disappearance of five children. I'm Bronson. I'm Jackson, and let's hop into it. George Sauter was born in Sardinia in 1895 and later moved to America in 1908. Later, George moved to West Virginia. George had many jobs, including working on the railroad, and he was also a truck driver. He then saved up enough money to buy himself a trucking business. George moved to Fayetteville, West Virginia with his wife, Jenny. And like Italian families do, they had 10 kids. The kids' names were Sylvia, Maurice, Martha, Louis, Jenny, Betty, John, George Jr., Marion, and the eldest son being away in the army. And they weren't by any means wealthy, but they were doing good for themselves. George was well known in his community for talking politics. And Mussolini was a very big topic at the time, and the Sauters didn't really think highly of him. The Fayetteville community was mostly Italian, and George would often get in arguments about his beliefs on Mussolini. On Christmas Eve in 1945, George, Jenny, and their kids decided to open one gift early. Later that night, after the kids opened up their presents, they asked their mom if they could stay up later and play with their toys. She agreed and told them to turn off the lights and lock the doors. Later that night, Jenny was awoken by a phone call, which she just assumed to be the wrong number. She then went to check on her kids to find the doors weren't locked and the lights weren't turned off. She was awoken in the middle of the night by strange noises like a thumping on the roof, but decided to go back to sleep. And then she woke up with her house on fire. Jenny then ran and grabbed her newborn baby and ran out with George. She then met three of the other kids already outside. George and Jenny then realized there was still five kids left in the house. Maurice, Martha, Louis, Jenny, and Betty all slept on the upper level of the home and still had not made it out. To save the five remaining children from the upper level of the home, George rushed to get his ladder from his shed, which was mysteriously missing. The ladder was later found more than 75 feet away hidden in a ditch. He then tried to move his coal trucks below the window to climb on top of them, but they bizarrely didn't start. George tried to get back into the house, breaking windows and cutting his arm pretty badly. He got to the staircase to see that it was entirely engulfed in flames. One of the daughters who escaped ran to the neighbor's house and called the fire department. They didn't pick up. After the operator didn't pick up, a neighbor personally drove to the fire chief's house. They told him about the situation, but he was intoxicated and couldn't drive. The only thing George and Jenny, as well as the four other children who managed to escape the house, could do is watch the fire destroy it. The fire reduced the house to ashes in just an hour. Only burnt timbers, rubble, and the basement remained. It wasn't until 8 a.m., seven hours after the fire had burned itself out, that the fire truck had appeared. And the fire department was only two and a half miles down the road from the Sauter residence, which leaves the question, why did it take them seven hours to get there? Local police arrived at the scene after the firefighters, and conducted a brief investigation. The coroner was called in and it was found that the five children had likely died in the fire. After the examiners and the fire department searched through the ash and all the rubble, they found no sign of the Sauter children. They then went to a crematorium where they learned that bones melt at 2000 degrees for two hours. Which doesn't make any sense because the house wouldn't have gotten nearly as hot and only burned for 30 to 45 minutes. The average house fire burns at a temperature of around 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't hot enough to destroy most metals and bones in that short of a time. Jenny couldn't understand how five children could perish in a fire with no bones, flesh, or anything else left behind. She even conducted a private experiment in which she burned animal bones, such as chicken bones, beef joints, and pork chop bones to test if they would be consumed by the fire. She was left with a pile of burnt bones each time. It doesn't make sense that there was no bones found, especially since they even found remnants of various household appliances still intact and still identifiable. After looking back on that day, they realized a lot of strange incidents had happened. After close examination, the fire was deemed to be caused by faulty wiring. Which is weird because George got his wires checked just months before. Another thing to remember is that about 12.30 a.m., Jenny received a call from an unknown number. While she was awake, she noticed that the lights were still on downstairs. If the fire had been caused by faulty wiring, as many have argued, the house would have been without power. That is to say, the lights wouldn't have been on less than an hour before the fire had started. Another strange thing that happened was a life insurance salesman tried to sell a life insurance policy to George's kids, but he didn't buy it and he got very, very mad. The salesman then said some very odd things. He said your house is going to go up in smoke, your children will be destroyed, 
and you will be repaid about the awful things you've said about Mussolini. After years of George and Jenny thinking their children are still out there, they hired a private investigator. The private investigator later found a weird green casing in the rubble that was thought to be part of an incendiary grenade. Which could have been thrown at the house, which would link to the thud that Jenny had awoken to. The detective later discovered that the same life insurance salesman who had threatened George earlier in the fall was a member of the jury that had decided that the house fire was a quote-unquote accident. This was yet another other strange incident that led George and Jenny to be even more suspicious. Many spottings of the children started popping up all over the country. At a tourist stop not even 50 miles away, a woman had claimed to have served them breakfast the morning after the fire with two strange men. There was another sighting at a hotel in Charleston. A hotel attendant claimed to have seen four of the five children, accompanied by two men and two women, all Italian. Another person claimed to have seen the children looking out a window of a car, driving away from the fire. Many years later, Jenny decided to check the mail, and what she found was very disturbing. A photograph was mailed to Jenny Sauter 23 years after the fire, specifically addressed to Jenny Sauter and not the family, with no return address. The photo was postmarked in Kentucky and had a photo of an individual. The man in the photo had striking resemblances to George and Jenny's lost son, Louis Sauter, who was nine at the time of the fire. The man looked to be in his mid-twenties, with dark brown eyes, dark curly hair, a long straight nose, and a left tilting eyebrow just like Lewis. And written on the back was as followed. Lewis Sauter, I love brother Frankie, Lil Boys, A90132 or 35. George and Jenny were so convinced this was Lewis that they even hired a private detective to go find the man in the photo somewhere in Kentucky. But the private detective strangely vanished and was never heard from again. After years of battling for justice, the governor of West Virginia conducted a hearing in the state capitol to finally close the case of the Sauter family mystery, stating that George and Jenny's search is hopeless. As a result, George and Jenny decided to set up a billboard on Route 16 to locate their missing children. It remained there for about 40 years before taken down. It's read as followed. After 30 years, it is not too late to investigate. On Christmas Eve in 1945, our home was set afire and five of our children, ages 5 through 14, kidnapped. The officials blamed defective wiring, although lights were still burning after the fire started. The official report stated that the children died in the fire. However, no bones were found in the residue and there was no smell of burning flesh during or after the fire. What was the motive of the law officers involved? What did they gain by making us suffer all these years of injustice? Why did they lie and force us to accept those lies? Soon after, in 1969, at the age of 74, George Sauter died. And 20 years later, in 1989, at the age of 85, Jenny Sauter died. The youngest of the ten children, Sylvia Sauter, who was two at the time of the fire, is the last remaining Sauter alive from that Christmas Eve night. She still continues to search for her missing siblings with the help of her grandkids. Maurice, Martha, Louis, Jenny, and Betty were kidnapped that day, according to the Sauters. It's difficult to know where to begin unraveling the story's many mysteries. Who was the person on the other end of the phone? Were they connected to the fire in any way? Where did the private detective disappear to? And who is the man in the photo mailed to Jenny? But one of the most puzzling things is if all five kids were abducted, how did it take place? Given that the eldest sister was asleep on a sofa in the living room and the parents were asleep in a bedroom less than 20 feet away, how did the kidnapper or kidnappers get the five children out of the house? If a stranger or even a family member had entered the house and taken the children away, at least one of the kids would have woken up because of the noise. At least one circumstance may have occurred that night that would solve this particular mystery. One of the jobs assigned to the two boys were to care for the family's herd of farm animals. It's probable that all five of the kids left the house to do this duty right after opening their one early gift and were abducted once they were outside. Conspiracy theorists are still investigating this case to learn more about the mysterious disappearance. There are even websites dedicated to this fascinating story on the internet. Although with each passing year, the odds of reaching a definitive conclusion become slimmer and slimmer. The question has remained unanswered for all these years. On Christmas Eve, what happened to those five kids? Was this the result of a devastating house fire? Or were the Sauter kids actually kidnapped? And that is the Sauter family mystery, which is still unsolved to this day. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was super fun making this Sauter family mystery. And thank you if you came from the TikTok. We appreciate all the support on there and just thank you very much.
And if you did make it this far and you wanna see more longer creepy content like this, make sure you guys subscribe and like the video. Thank you.